Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the Scottish Football Pundit Podcast. Today we are talking about transfer news regarding Celtic looking at a new left back to replace their out of favour Bolling Golly. Now Bolling Golly has breached <coughs> has breached the coronavirus rules set out by Celtic and the Scottish Government um, and didn't quarantine for 14 days and came back. Now Celtic are trying to offload the left back and are trying to bring in a new left back and are currently trying to target the Leeds left back, for, for, I think he was former Wolves left back as well, um, Barry Douglas, who's got I, th- I think I read it. So he's got a year left on his contract at Ellen Road. Um, so yeah, that'd be a good left back for Celtic as a replacement to co- for competition with uh, Greg Taylor. Celtic are also currently looking at um, Irish international centre back from Brighton, um, Shane Duffy on a loan deal, which would be around two million. Um, I think that would be for about a season that's an all you'd sign him for Celtic if they manage to get that through for competition to Christopher Aya and um, Christopher uh, Julian um, they recently got rid of Jozo Simeonovic and yeah another thing that I read before I started this was that Hibs are trying to are in con- contract talks with Martin Boyle um, on trying to get him on a new contract for Hibs. That would be a good, if Hibs managed to get him to stay at Easter Road that would be a good signing because he is a good player. Um, he's a quite a crucial player for Hibs to be in my opinion and he brings a lot to the on the pitch and on the ball for Hibs. Um, he's one of the one of their key players and he's done quite well for the last couple of seasons at Beneath Easter Road. Especially in Edinburgh Derby's to be honest with you. Um so yeah. So out of these fixtures, the first one that takes place at three o'clock today is at Hamilton. I think it's still the same Hope CBD arena or something like that. Um, Hamilton are playing St. Moran. Now that's not really a tough game to be honest. Not really the game of the day but it's one of the games. Um, Hamilton have lost two games in a row. Um, St. Moran have lost 1-1-1. One, one, one. Um, both teams are probably desperate to try and get the three points here today. Um, mostly St Mirren have got a good team um, to be honest they're trying to they're trying, they're target the seasons to reach top 6 Hamilton to be honest they're trying, they're trying to stay, stay up this season not, not to be relegated um, Hamilton are at home so that could be a slight advantage for Hamilton but if I was to pick today between the two, it would be either a one all draw or in fact, yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. Hamilton won, St. Mirren won for, my, for the first game today. Kilmarnock versus St. Johnston. St. Johnston have recently got um, lost a big crucial factor as a team. Um, they lost their manager, Tommy Wright. After three or four years in charge, um, they've also lost a few of their key players from last season. Come on, Nick, there's there's a crucial good side. They've current they lost um, Stephen O'Donnell at the end of last season, and they're at they're at Rugby Park today. They're at home, so currently on paper I know it's the start of the season but I'm going to go for a 2-0-1 to Kilmarnock this is the game of the day for me today up at Dingwall it's Ross County versus Dundee United 
they will have promoted Dundee United trying to trying to do well for themselves back up in the Scottish Premiership. Um, Ross County they're just a decent side to be fair they, they can play well up at Dingo. Um, Stuart Kettlewell, um, Ross Stuart just now. Um, yeah. They've done the United to current have lost Robbie Nielsen from last season. They've lost Lee McAllister and they lost Gordon Forrest the Hearts. Um they've still got a few key players from last season like Lawrence Shankland, um Peter Pollock, etc. Um also signing out a couple of new players as well. Personally for me I would go for a one on one at Dundee United. For Mickey, for Mickey Mellon side today, um, and also the last but last but not least on the fixture list today on my pod on my pod, podcast is Hibernian versus Motherwell at Easter Road. Motherwell haven't really started that well to their to their season to be honest with you. Um, I think that they've lost their first three games of the season. I think that they have. Um, they've got a, they've got a good side. They still got Stephen Robinson in charge for last season. They got Jake K. Stay back from Rangers on a one deal. They've still got David Turnbull and Alan Campbell as well. Um, Hibbern, <coughs> Hibs have currently signed a few good players, in the likes of um Dre Wright. They've also got. Um, Kevin ne- Kevin Nisbet from the Fairman, who was a key factor in the Dunfermline squad last season. He done well for the Pars. Um, they sc- they scored the hat trick in the last game against Dundee United. Um, the City Star Road. Motherwell current have signed Stephen O'Donnell on a free transfer for a se- um, for a season. I think it is. Um, I was to look on paper at that. Hibs have won the first three games of the season. Um, looking at it on paper, I would, I know, I would have to go for another win for Hibernian. To be honest with you, if you look at it on paper, Hibs are favourites going into this game, and I would go for a two one, two one one to Hibs. Um. Now another thing I was going to talk about on the pod- on the podcast today is Celtic and Aberdeen. Ning Ning Aberdeen players have breached the coronavirus rules set up by the Scottish government and the SFA. Um, yeah, that's they've they've lost nine players and Celtic with Bolly and go Bolly Bolly and Golly. Um, that's another thing. Uh, Nick Sturgeons gave a yellow card to Scottish football with one one more one more thing like this and it's a red card that we stopped again. Um hopefully as a professional they should they should be listening to the Scottish government, etc. And going by their rules, going by their managers rules as well. Um it's a big upset for Aberdeen and especially Celtic. Celtic, um, if you look at it, they've for the both games they should they should be deducted points in my opinion for the for what the players have done. Um, especially ball the ball and goal who played them a match that Celtic won. Um, Celtic should be deducted points. Um, yeah, and last but not least, it is. Another disgraceful decision by the Sc- Scottish Football Association, the SFA, regarding Hearts. Hearts were told, were told that they could go back to training. We were at training for about four or five days. We were told on Thursday, Thursday night, that they were to stop, that they were to cease training until at least August the 24th. Yesterday, how Hull City from down England started training up at Rickerton in Orion. Um, in my opinion, that's not really fair to be honest. 
So I hope, I hope that hearts take it all the way to be honest. Um, oh no, so I've heard that in my little mobile we're meant to be training there as well on a pre-season camp or something like that. Um, so if you look at it, that's 10 days from now. If you look at it, that's 5 days for Hull or SD, then another 5 days for a um, mobile um, before Hearts can go back to training on, on August the 24th. That's not really right to be honest with you. Um, the only teams that are allowed to train in Scotland just now is all the teams in the Scottish Premiership. I would say the Scottish Premiership, no one else is allowed to train apart from um, a women's side, Glasgow City, who's um, training for a, champ a Women's Champions League Cup tie. Um, that's the only other team that's been allowed to train outside of the Scottish Premiership. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going on over the last couple of days and I wanted to come on and do a quick video um, based on what I've read and etc and tell you my point, my point of view. But um, yeah guys, I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.